You're listening to the Optimal Performance Podcast. The OPP is brought to you by Natural Stacks, makers of 100% natural and open source supplements designed to help you live optimal. For more information on how to build optimal mental and physical performance into your life, go to naturalstacks.com. Oh, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Optimal Performance Podcast. On today's episode, we are joined by Jeff Chilton, who is the president of Namix Medicinal Mushroom Extracts. Uh, his website is realmushrooms.com. And Jeff is the guy who supplies natural stacks with the mushroom components to our Myco line. He's a fascinating guy. He's a returning guest, and he is the king of mushrooms. He really is the guy. And his knowledge of mushrooms and uses in medicine and nutrition just really goes back above and beyond anyone else. And we dig into some really cool topics. This is a bit of a longer episode, which I just, we could have gone all day long, but we cover things like mushroom trends, why certain medicinal or nutritional mushroom supplements go through these waves of being popular. Um, Here's a hint. The Rishi uh, is the new it girl for mushrooms. And uh, we talk about um, this really sort of controversial topic, which is most of the mushroom supplements that people are taking are not actual mushrooms. Let me repeat that again. The mushroom supplements that are sold all over the place, all over the world, many, 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 most of them are not actual mushrooms. They are mycelium, which is sort of the root system of the mushrooms grown on grain. So we call it mycelium. Um, um, myceliated grain. So basically, instead of giving you the actual mushroom ground up in a pill form, what most of you are buying or what most people who are taking mushroom supplements are buying um, that aren't natural stacks are just grain that's ground up with this mycelium structure. Some of the biggest mushroom suppliers as um, for uh, nootropics for supplements are not really mushrooms. You're just getting grain. And we talk into, uh, we talk about the math on that. We talk about the business around that. It's really super fascinating. We talk about the power of fungi for the body and the mind and the brain. And uh, we also get into um, psychedelic mushrooms kind of towards the end of the episode. Uh, it's, it's, it's all in there. It's got a ton of great information. Um, as always, uh, I, it's always my effort to bring you the best possible content and I would love your feedback. I'd love a five-star review on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen to your podcasts, share it with your friends and I'd love your feedback. Sean at naturalstacks.com. Also, uh, Chiefs for Men. Chiefs for Men is a soap company that is sort of co-owned by the Natural Stacks guys. And, uh, if you go to chiefsformen.com, and use the code OPTIMAL, you get 25% off your first online purchase. I've been using an invigorating face wash in the morning time and it has got a zip to it. Uh, It smells good. I really enjoy it. Um, So go ahead and check it out. Also, as I continue to try to grow my tribe, you know, some some of you, I'm going to be, I'm going to be talking about this more. Um, I'm a life coach. I'm a life purpose coach and a performance coach. I do relationship coaching. Um, I help people. This is what I do. And if you're interested in receiving helpful tidbits of information, pieces of inspiration, biohacks, lifestyle hacks, uh, thoughts on spirituality, email me your phone number and I will send you a text message in the morning, no strings attached, just to kind of get your day started off right. Uh, send me your send me your phone number and I will text you, uh, Sean, S-E-A-N at naturalstacks.com and It's really my purpose to continue to help people at scale Uh, the same way that I've done in my previous businesses and the same way that I do with this podcast. I just want to help people. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this episode with uh, Jeff Chilton. He's a fascinating guy and there is a ton of really meaningful information. Uh, I hope you enjoy. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Chilton. You're listening to the Optimal Performance Podcast, and I'm your host, Sean McCormick. It's the OPP. I'm a performance coach, a wellness entrepreneur, a blogger, a speaker, a biohacker, and it's my privilege to bring to you the leading experts in the field of performance. 
So let's dig right in. And we're joined today again. Welcome back, Jeff. Jeff Chilton, the president of Namix Medicinal Mushroom Extracts. Jeff, welcome back to the Optimal Performance Podcast. Uh, Sean, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, I'm happy to be back and talking to you. So some of you may know Jeff by now, some of you may not, but he's the guy. And I'll just say it flat out from the get-go. If you could see uh, what I'm seeing, this vast library of just walls and walls of books and native art and artifacts. And the last time we talked, um, uh, he was talking about, Jeff, you're talking about like the, the fact that there's so much information. There's literally so many different ways to look at fungi, uh, mycelium, the use of mushrooms dating back to ancient lore. You've written a ton about it. And some of that information is actually going away. You shared with me one of your friends was was having to sort of like liquidate his mushroom library. Um, how do you keep it all together, man? Like, how do you keep the different strains and the different types and the different uses of all the different mushrooms? Like, how 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 does that brain of yours stay on track? <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Coffee with reishi in it. <laughs> Perfect answer. Yeah, I, I guess I should supplement that with lion's mane. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what? It, it's, uh, um, yeah, I, I have to say I, I'm overworked and underpaid right now. Our, <laughs> our, uh, our business, Namex, and, and as you know, I mean, I started growing mushrooms in 1973, worked on a mushroom farm for 10 years, growing agaricus mushrooms, lived worked with mushrooms you know i know i know mushrooms very intimately they're very close friends of mine yeah <laughs> and uh and and you know i uh, in 1989 i i introduced uh mushrooms as nutritional supplements to the the supplement market 1989 and down at uh, natural foods expo in los angeles and and nobody had a mushroom product back then nobody had a mushroom product everybody had green herbs you know, echinacea and ginseng and all the other herbs and things like that. But, you know, I'm walking around with a reishi mushroom in hand and <laughs> showing it to people. Dig this. Look at this reishi mushroom. Pretty cool. And they're like, yeah, that's really neat. What is it? <laughs> what do we do with it? Uh -huh. I'm like, well, I've been using traditional Chinese medicine for a long time. You really should have mushrooms in your product line. But but nobody's nobody's asking for them. Why should we put a product out of there's no demand? So that's what it was like back in the 90s. And, and uh and it took a full, you know, at least ten years to to write books and write write articles for magazines and and educate people to the benefits of nutritional mush nutritional <laughs> medicinal mushrooms, and and so, you know, it, it uh, today when all of a sudden mushrooms are really trending, it's like you know people are like, wow, look at that mushrooms, and and I'm like, yeah, yeah, mushrooms, they they've been around for a while, and and you know none of this stuff happens overnight. I mean, it doesn't right. happen overnight. It's a process. It's always a process. It's like that that musician that all of a sudden you're going, oh, my God, where did this person come from? He's an overnight star. No, it's not. It's about they're grinding away for 10 years. Yeah. Security in small venues and a song hits and now he's a superstar. It's, <laughs> it's kind of like that with uh, – with this, uh, with the whole mushroom thing is all of a sudden mushrooms are discovered and there's articles being written about them. Every time I turn around, there's another article and, and the demand for our products has gone way up to the point where I, I'm just swamped with work and we're hiring people. And, and uh, you know, how do I manage it all? I, I hire people. <laughs> I have to have people working for us that can take care of things that I used to do. So, you know, in any business, it's interesting how business works is, is you start out yourself and maybe a couple other people and, and you go along, you do everything. You do everything from the, you know, taking the orders to processing the products to, to boxing. I, I'm a great shipper. I can, I can pack things in boxes. <laughs> I use a tape gun. I can, I can get things off and ship them. I can do it all. I've done it all. And, you know, it's kind of funny to be, be then in a position where, where, you know, you, you hire people as you go along and you, your business builds and things like that. And you, and you have to, and, and then now all of a sudden it's like the demand for 
mushrooms and mushroom products and our extracts has just gone through the roof. And uh, it's great to have my son Sky working with me now. And Sky, three years ago, developed a, <clears throat> a line of uh, retail products. Uh, I had some retail products back in the 90s, but I, 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 you know, I put them out there more than anything else just to show other companies, look, Here's how you can do it. Here's how you can actually put mushrooms out in capsules and bottles. And here's my labels. And look, I've got, I've got them. Here it is. And but but I really wanted to focus on just the raw material side of things. So I let that go um, <clears throat> and uh, carried on with the raw materials and did really well that way. But um, he came into the business about four years ago. And one of the things you want to do is to create a retail line. And I thought, oh, yeah, you and, you know, there's so many other people out there. Well, he did. And, you know, we worked on that together and he put out this retail line and sold it on a website, all online pretty much, and Amazon. And that's ah, done so well. It's just been great. And it's been great having him as part of the business. That's the other side of it, getting my son Sky involved. And now my son Adam is is coming into the company and starting to work in it. And, and that's just been fantastic for me. I mean – I'm in pretty close contact with my my two sons, and now to have them in the business is just like this is fantastic. It's just more time I get to spend with them. Um, so so you know all these things. It's just kind of an organic thing how it yeah. works and how how it all and and uh, <laughs> I, pun intended. It's an organic process. It's yeah. very slow. It fruits occasionally. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's right. That's right. And, and you know, fortunately today with uh, the Internet and with, uh, you know, electronic communication with Skype like we're using right now, I can, I can leave the Pacific Northwest where I'm looking out my window at the, the gray, cloudy skies. And, and all this last week it's been raining a lot. And I'm like, uh, you know what? This is I'm, I'm looking out there in the waters because I'm living in a flyway. I'm going, all of these birds are flying south. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty good. It's time. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, you know, getting ready to do that. But with all the communications today, it's great. I can I can be in Argentina fishing by day and in the, in the evening communicating with yeah. the office and and seeing what's going on. My email still comes in and I can still process that. So it's great great in that sense too. So so yeah, things change. We're we're really busy, but you know it's rewarding in some sense too. It's rewarding that people are finally starting to discover mushrooms as a great food and a good supplement. So yeah. Why do you think that that they have become trendy recently. Well, I, I think that it's it's almost like the whole snowball that's rolling downhill. There, there have been people out there that have been talking a lot about medicinal mushrooms. I mean, and uh, YouTube is one of those things too. People see YouTube videos and and. Uh, and, and, you know, every company out there now has a mushroom product and they, they have had for a number of years. And then and all of a sudden it kind of hits this point where it goes from just slowly rolling along till it just has picked up a lot of speed and just starts to go really fast because all of a sudden the news spreads. And and also I think, you know what, I think your generation right now is really tuning into to um, healthy living and 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 are looking for healthy products, whether it be yeah. uh, supplements or whether it be food. And, and, you know, right now the big thing out there seems to be superfoods and, and, uh, mushrooms now are a superfood. <clears throat> well, you know, I kind of knew that all along because, you know, to me, the, the beauty of mushrooms is that their, their food is medicine. Mushrooms are not only a great food, but they also provide all these medicinal benefits. And, and, uh, that's something to me that, I've sort of figured out from way back, um, and it's now finally catching up, and people are starting to to uh, figure that one out. And and so you know that's that's cool. That's really great. I'm really happy about it, and I think it's great for. I mean, I mean, in Asia, geez, in Asia, we just got back from China in September. We almost every lunch or dinner, there's at least one or two dishes that that have mushrooms in them, or if not a, a hundred percent mushroom dish i mean they're eating mushrooms in every meal and we should be too i mean i eat mushrooms 
three, four, five times a week, sometimes just a, a, a big platter of them. And sometimes uh, I'll eat them with, uh, I'll have a, a steak or I'll, I'll have a stir fry or I'll eat them with my eggs or something like that. They, you can put them in just about anything. Yeah. So, so really it, it's a great food. It's very versatile and, and people should just jump on board and, and try it out. There's, there's a, a number of different species that you can buy. You can buy the standard button mushroom, which I love. I think it's still a great mushroom, a uh, very versatile, uh, there's shiitake mushrooms, which is my favorite. And there's three or four or five other ones that if you're in the right place, especially, you know, Sean on the West coast, I mean, Seattle, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could go into the whole foods or PCC or, or go down into Chinatown. And, and I mean, you would have fresh mushrooms about six or seven different species that you can purchase. And, and that is, um, that's fantastic. I, I mean, we're really fortunate here on the West coast that we have access to these fresh mushrooms. I was speaking to somebody from the Midwest today and they're like, Hey, I'm in South Dakota. I, I can't get any mushrooms other than the button mushroom here. And, and someone else in, in uh, Texas, a uh, half hour out of Austin, they said the same thing where I live. You know, I've got the agaricus in the supermarket. That's it. So. Uh, the, um, I've been enjoying uh, chanterelles uh, recently. They're, you know, at the uh, PCC, in, um, which is a co-op, you know, co-op store here in the Seattle area and Whole Foods. I've been enjoying those with my eggs for breakfast. And, and so for context, um, uh, we use uh, we use Jeff's product in our Myco line. And for those of you listening who have used our Myco Boost, Myco Immune, and Myco Mind, um, they're they're mushrooms sourced from Jeff. And I gotta tell you, Jeff, I I have I don't know how many colds I have staved off with the Myco Immune product. Um, I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old and they are just absolute cesspools for germs and <laughs> fire. And as you know, you know, with kids, yeah, you know, like, uh, yeah. it's unavoidable and it's cold season and you know, you can, there's a little bit of a nasal inflection in my, in the way that I'm talking, but it would be, it would be 10 times worse if I wasn't taking the mycoimmune. And so just from as an opportunity to say this publicly with other people listening, like I really, really enjoy your products. Um, I really enjoy the fact that Roy and you have been, have worked together to, to put together those compounds, um, um, for the Myco line and the Myco boost. I, I really like as a pre-workout supplement. I don't like other, um, you know, pre-workout drinks or mixes. They just feel, I feel like my heart's going to beat out of my chest <laughs> Um, but, but the combination of cordyceps and yerba mate in the myco boost is, is just this like long lasting energy that is so unique that I absolutely love it. So I just, I had to get that out early because I just, I have so much respect for what you do. Well, you know what? And it was, it was really great to meet Roy. I met Roy back in 2015 and we got together in, in Seattle. We had a couple of really nice uh, conversations. We walked around Green Lake and, and, uh, you know, that was, that was when I was first, uh, he sort of introduced me to you at that time in terms of you were somebody working with him and he talked about you and, and you had a facility not far from Green Lake. And, uh, um, yeah, R Roy was interesting because he was smart enough to really figure it out because there was so much misinformation out there about mushrooms and mushroom products. And, and there were people out there touting these myceliated grain products as, as wonderful and mushrooms were not. And, and, uh, you know, I spoke to Roy about it and told him about our research and, and what was going on with mushrooms and, and he got it, he got it right away. And, and right. you know what, you know, what's so interesting to me is that, is that I, I take that information to, to a lot of what I call old line herbal companies. And I, I take it because I, I look at a lot of these companies and here it is. They've, they've fallen for some of these myceliated grain products because they're so um, inexpensive and, and they, they pick up on the, the information that's being put out by these companies and they, they just fall for it. And, and I go to them and I say, hey, look, I, I've got scientific uh, analysis here that shows you exactly what's in those products. They're nothing but starch. They're not real mushrooms. And, and uh, wouldn't you like to just upgrade your product? I mean, you know, these companies don't have to, to, to say, oh, yeah, we made a mistake. No, just say we've upgraded our product. You know what? They, they look at me and they're like, you know, nobody's complaining. Um, I'm making money. 
I've got I've got other things to deal with, and and it's just like, and I'm like, but doesn't it make you think at all that maybe selling starch and calling it mushrooms is not a good thing ultimately? I mean, isn't there something more than just making money? And and that's really the key thing for me is I I'm not in this to make money. I mean, to me, I, I'm in business, and certainly as business we as a business we have to turn a profit, but that's not the point of me being here. I'm doing something because I, I enjoy it. I believe in it. And the last thing I want to do is sell a product out there as a supplement product to, to, um, anybody if it's not a genuine product. Let, let, I want to unpack that because I think this is a key point that still needs to be clarified for so many people. And it's a point that we're going to make, make over and over again. And it's really a, a, a pillar of the way that we do things at Natural Stacks, which is to be open source, the highest quality ingredients um, tested. And just for folks who are unacclimated to the, the scandal in the mushroom world is most mushroom supplements, most mushroom companies sell what they call mushroom products which are not actually mushrooms. They're mycelium grown on some sort of grain. Is that safe to say? Absolutely. That's exactly right. what's going on. Yeah. So they're, they're saying, buy our chaga, buy our turkey tail, buy our reishi supplements for, for these effects and these effects and these benefits. And what they're actually getting is the before the mushroom actually fruits, it has this mycelium, this network, this sort of stringy, filament uh that's grown on barley or oats or grain of some sort and then they process it and then you're actually getting more grain than actual mushroom and what right yeah no that, that's absolutely right i mean i mean the the end product they they um you know and, and so everybody just to be clear again the mycelium in some ways you can think about it almost as a root system and and it's actually the the body of this fungus. It, it's out there. It's in the ground. It, it's re, a recycler. It's recycling all the organic matter out there. And, and it's just one part of this fungal organism. And, and that's what, after it consumes a lot of nutrients, it will put up a mushroom. And so they will actually take that mycelium, grow it on sterilized grain in a laboratory. And at the end of the process, uh, where they've, they've covered this grain with that uh, mycelium. They just dry it, grind it to a powder. They don't remove the the grain, and the product becomes mostly grain. And and that's easy to to determine because we've got tests that can that can we can test for starch. Uh, starch is an alpha glucan. We can test for that. Um, people can do an uh, a uh, iodine starch test, which is great. Really, really fun. If you ever get a chance, Sean, try this where you just get a little bottle of iodine that you buy from the store and you take uh, starch or, or you take one of these other products and you empty the capsules out in a quarter cup of water and you stir it up really good. Drop the iodine in and if there's starch in anything in one of these products, it will turn black. Absolutely black. If you, if you take a mushroom dried mushroom or one of our mushroom products and you put it into water, stir it up and do the same thing, all you'll see is the color of the iodine. That's because there is no, mushrooms do not have starch in them. So that's that's one of the easy ways to determine. I mean, uh, some of the people listening to this might go, yeah, no, I'm taking this mushroom product. It's really great. And then it's like, well, would you know, if it's not natural stacks or one of our products that you def absolutely know, why don't you try this iodine starch test and, and see? And the funny thing is, is that some of these companies now, they actually are saying, they're saying, oh, that starch is, is a good thing. It's actually magic. It's got, it's got special properties. And I'm like, magic starch? Wait a second <laughs> here. You know, come on. Look, if, I, if I'm out there looking for a mushroom product, do I want to buy grain? No, I don't want to buy grain. I want fungal tissue. I want mushroom. I'm not looking for this myceliated grain. And, and again, the way I like to, to, um, sort of uh, uh, talk about this is is if you know what the product the uh, tempeh is and I don't know if we talked about tempeh at all but do you know what tempeh is Sean uh, I, I don't I it sounds familiar but I don't have, know what it is okay well tempeh tempeh is is it's a food product and and what it is it's cooked soybeans oh okay 
with fungal mycelium grown on it. And so when you buy this, it's a block. It's a block. It's usually refrigerated. It's a block of, of soybeans, and it's all white. <laughs> that white that's covering these soybeans is actually mycelium. So this is a food that is soybeans with mycelium on it. Fine. It's a food product. These people are manufacturing something very similar to that, and then they're grinding it up, soybean or, or grain and all, and selling it as a supplement. It's not a supplement. Sell it as a food. That's what it really is. Interesting. That's, what, that's what's really, yeah, it really is. And that, because this is, I mean, that's just a way for somebody to, to know what this looks like when it's fresh. And one of the things that we do when we go out to a trade show is we have a bag of grain that has got mycelium growing on it. So we've actually got a, a bag of fresh myceliated grain there, and we we can show people when they say, oh, yeah, I'm taking this product. Well, here, see this bag of grain here and see all that white stuff on it? This is what you are consuming as your nutritional supplement. It's not a mushroom. Huh. It, it is myceliated grain, and you can just kind of move it around a little bit, and, and you, you kind of handle it a little bit through the bag. I mean, you can, from the outside, you can kind of, you know, work it a little bit and it will crumble into the individual, individual grains. And you can look at it right there and you can say, yeah, oh my, you mean that's what I'm consuming? I'm consuming this grain with this white mycelium on it. Yeah, that's what you've got. And, and the, the problem is that, that in the, the labels on these products, on the front label, it says reishi mushroom. It says shiitake mushroom, maitake mushroom. And it's got a picture of a mushroom. So you have no idea, if you're looking at that front panel, you have absolutely no idea that that is not a mushroom. Sometimes they even say made with 100% organic mushrooms. Some of these companies, this is, this is, this is the beauty of it. <clears throat> this is the bait and switch of it. Some of these companies actually call themselves, they've got mushroom in the name of the company. <laughs> and they're only selling myceliated they're only grain. Selling myceliated grain, yeah. In fact, it's gone so far, and it's so crazy that some of these companies will say, "You know, our mushroom products go with anything. They don't even taste like mushroom." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, really? Uh, gee, why wouldn't I run up a red flag on that one? Right. <laughs> You're trying to sell me a mushroom product that doesn't taste like mushroom. Why is that anyway? Would it be, uh, be because of all that grain you've got in there? What? Wh why? Why is it that? <clears throat> because, like you said, if you go back to Chinese, you know, traditional Chinese herbal medicine, you know, um, it's a different. It's not like medicine. It's not as though medicinal mushrooms are a new thing. They're super old, like as old as medicine itself. However, the, in the past, maybe it's been since the '60s or '70s or maybe further back. There's been products, mushroom or or quote quote unquote mushroom products available. Why isn't there a an agency or a governing body? punishing those companies that are gigantic and wildly profitable and wildly outspoken about their products that is a farce. Why are, why are they not being um, managed, punished? Well, well, it's pretty simple because, because nobody's dying. Nobody's uh. having any ill effects. I mean, I mean, can you imagine? It's like these products are like, placebo is like just eating starch it's like eating uh, rice you know it's like they're not harming anybody got they're it. not anybody any good but they're not harming anybody and and fda and ftc and these government agencies well you know they have limited resources they can, they're, they're after the people where they think there's a product on the market that can really be harmful so that's what they go after first this is like minor absolutely minor to these uh, to these regulatory agencies so so they don't do anything about it and, and you know uh, let's face it, it it's a, a little bit of uh, you know I mean capitalism is like that it doesn't matter whether it's the supplement industry or anywhere else I mean there are bogus products in every single category out there yeah. there's the whole range from from really high quality products to just 
just uh, regular crap. And so this is this is just the nature of the marketplace. <laughs> you know, it's like let the buyer beware. And, and so so part of the the thing for me is yeah, I, I'm trying to educate people. I, I don't really care whether they buy my products or not. <laughs> Buy them somewhere else, but I want you at least to have the information to know the difference and know what you are purchasing. So if you want to purchase grain with mycelium on it, be my guest, but at least know what you're doing and and know that it is not a mushroom. It's not a mushroom. It's like, no, it is myceliated grain. That must be... Uh, It must be frustrating to know that so many people are doing it, knowingly falsifying uh, supplements and also like doubling down on it and saying, no, 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 mycelium is better and the the, the grain is important because it does X, Y, and Z. And it it just doesn't pass the sniff test, honestly, because I've heard that and I'm not going to name any names. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I keep hearing it over and over and I, you know, I'm, I'm up to, I'm hip to it. Like, cause we've, we've spoken before and I, yeah. and I've researched yeah. the stuff I eat. Yeah. But, but, but the fact that, that, there, that there's a, that there's a doubling down that's where people <clears throat> are saying things like, oh no, 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 no. The mycelium, mycelium is actually better for you. It's actually more powerful. And the grain that it's grown on is, is really acts as a, as a catalyst. It's like, <laughs> oh, that doesn't make any sense. How could that, how? <laughs> it, it doesn't make any sense at all. And, and to hear some of these people talk about it, you know, people who know better, right. But- the, a lot of these people and a lot of these companies are kind of trapped. I mean, a lot, you know what? The, the people that manufacture these products, they're trapped. They've, got a, they've generated a good business. And um, the product, I mean, let, let, me, let me tell you something here that, that we just were working on that is so interesting. Because you know what? These, these products, you can actually, you know, the, the mycelium on grain is actually a process developed in the 1930s. And they develop this as mushroom spawn. Mushroom spawn is seed. Mushrooms don't have seeds. They have spores, but you don't use spores to grow mushroom. You use live mycelium. So, so in order to, to use that live mycelium, you've got to have something as a carrier when you take that live mycelium and plant it into your compost or, or whatever it is that you're growing your mushrooms in. Well, so they developed this process. It was called grain spawn. And, and so they would, they would sterilize grain. They would inoculate it with mycelium. At the end of the process, they'd have this nice bag of grain that was all white with the mycelium. You'd take it out there. You'd crumble it up. Each grain became like a seed because there was mycelium on it. So you could mix it in to your substrate, your compost, your sawdust, whatever, very easily. Wonderful invention. It was invented, this, this was invented in 1932. A lot of these companies claim, oh, we've got this proprietary process that we're doing. It's really, we don't want to tell you about it because it's really proprietary. It's like, nah, nothing proprietary at all. It's a very simple process. It is cheap. And, and here's, the, here's the kicker, is some of these same companies actually sell grain spawn. So the actual bag of grain spawn live they actually sell that to mushroom growers. Now, okay, here's what's interesting. When you take that bag of fresh grain, it, it's like they haven't dried it out or anything, and it's got the live mycelium on it. Um, if you take that and then you dry it, well, the price of that that you could buy from them as spawn is two cents a gram. Huh. Now think about that for a second. <laughs> Two cents a gram. And that means for these companies that are actually putting out these products, and some of them only have 30 grams in them. Some of them have 60 grams in them. They're, we're talking about uh, 60 cents to maybe a dollar twenty is what that product is is worth in there. Not, not what it costs them. No, this is what they're selling the live stuff for, but no, they will instead grow this same stuff out and they'll grow it a little bit longer and then they'll just dry it, grind to a powder and sell it to you for, for 10, 20, 30 times as much money. 
Now, now think about that. So, so, you know, my thing is, well, I, I'm starting to tell people, look, if you really want those products, buy it fresh. Dry it out yourself. Grind it to a powder because you can you can buy it and it'll cost you two cents a gram. And then you can grow it yourself at home and well, grind well, it up. And... Well, isn't that interesting? I mean, I mean, how uh, that's and shameful. Here, well, and it's right, it's right there in plain sight. But people don't put two and two together. They don't put it together that this company's actually also selling this same product as seed for growing mushrooms as spawn and they're selling it very very cheap on a dry weight basis compared to that product that they have put in capsules and bottles and are selling to you as a supplement it's it's shameful actually it is it, it, it hidden hidden in plain sight man hidden in plain sight it, uh, that's absolutely right and, and it's just kind of funny because you think wow uh, you're, you're actually selling this spawn. If anybody caught on to that, they would might be going, wait a minute, hold on a second here. What's going on? How come I'm paying so much because just because you've dried it out? You 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 were you started to say you're working on something. Is there is there something else that you guys are working on, or did I miss miss, miss hear you? You mean uh, last time we spoke, or no? You were you were saying you're working on something, or or oh well, I think I think what I was referring to is the fact that that we're kind of working on on putting out a paper about this, the cost of actual grain spawn versus the cost of this supplements. We're, we're, uh, um, gonna, we're gonna try and publicize that a little more because, you know, hey, look, if you wanna buy it, go ahead and buy it. But look, you can buy it a lot cheaper if you want to start buying their spawn instead of buying the, the packaged dry, dried up thing. I mean, it's gonna cost you 1 30th of what you've been paying for that very expensive supplement. But in terms of working on things, you know, one of the couple of things we're working on, one of which is we are going to be coming out next year with a, uh, a mushroom vitamin D product. Um, and, and, you know, look, vitamin D is is really pretty cheap. And then people go like, why do, you, why do you want to do that? Well, you know, vitamin D3 is made from lanolin. It's made from an animal, which some people don't want. Uh, vitamin D2 a lot of vitamin D2 out there is made from yeast, which is fine. Yeast is is uh, uh, is fungal, um, so they make they make vitamin D2 from yeast. But we can also make vitamin D2 from the actual mushroom powder, and and we can make a lot of it in a small amount of powder. So so we're thinking that you know what it's kind of cool that it's a it's a, a food product uh, it's a fungal product it's not an animal product for those vegans out there that would sound like something like that um, yeah I think we'll we'll do that we'll put out a um, an actual mushroom powder that is vitamin D and, and the reason we can do that is because there's a this precursor in mushrooms called ergosterol and when that gets exposed to UV, it turns from ergosterol into um, ergocalciferol, which is vitamin D2. And, 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 you know, vitamin D is, is important. We all need to, to have vitamin D. And I think, well, you know, why not, why not be uh, getting that from a fungal source? Like, why not just getting, getting that from actually a mushroom? And there's a couple of ways to do this. We could, we could put out one, which is like, okay, this is just going to be a, a high level thousand I use per capsule or 2000 I use, or we could even uh, do it to where a lot of our mushroom products have a little bit of that put into them so they're just kind of like vitamin d fortified which would be kind of cool too uh, yeah and, and you know vitamin d is something that you know especially here in the northwest it's like where's the sunshine yeah <laughs> yeah you're you're i'm looking out the, the window at the same gray the same gray sky you are right now <laughs> yeah I, exactly i i just got a bunch of blood work done and um actually posted a, uh posted a podcast going through my blood work and one of the things that my naturopathic doctor suggested she's like you need you need i was like i take it every day she's like you need to take you need to take it twice a day <laughs> wow 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 um, i was um for whatever reason, I was I was uh, I was going to benefit drastically from that. I mean, and I try to spend some as much time outside as possible, but but especially in these northern latitudes, we just don't have access to it. Well, yeah, yeah, and you know what? It, the interesting part about it is that is that as the the sun gets lower in the sky, you can even get out there on a sunny day and expose yourself. But because of the angle of the sun, we're not getting that much in terms of UV. So, so that's not helping us out a lot. And man, 
the the history of vitamin D is so interesting, Sean. Oh man, it's interesting. They didn't really figure it out until the 1800s. And in Britain, they had all these kids in the cities that were walking around with rickets. And, and uh, they realized because the country kids didn't have it. And then they realized because of industrialization and because of buildings getting taller, the sunlight was being obscured. And so all of these children were growing up without getting sufficient sunlight. And so they had this outbreak of rickets. Huh. And, it's, and so what they did is they started fortifying milk and uh, other foods with vitamin D and boom. Just took care of it, just like that. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, it really interesting. I mean, I mean, when you start reading about some of these diseases and how they figure out what's going on, it's it's fascinating. And the story of vitamin D is is kind of like that. I mean, it's just like vitamin D has been put into milk uh, for the longest time. It's been fortified with uh, with vitamin D, and and there's other products that have uh, been put into that has been put into. So fortification of, of products with D has been important, especially for us in the northern climes where we're not not getting as much sunlight as we could actually use. And and the research is is it's just crazy when you look at the research and the deficiency of vitamin D and what it creates in terms of all the different illnesses. And uh, the research is pretty powerful. Yeah. Um, you mentioned your favorite mushroom earlier and I, and I was, was one of the questions that I was going to ask you. Um, and I assume that you're eating, you know, you said reishi, right? My favorite mushrooms, uh, reishi in terms of, yeah. uh, in terms of a medicinal mushroom. Absolutely. Okay. And then what about from a nutritional or do you think of, do you use medicinal and nutritional the same way? Well, you know what? Um, I can't eat reishi mushrooms. So, but I, I love mushrooms and, and so I eat shiitake. I eat agaricus. Those are the two that I'm, I have access to here in Tofino. If I'm in the city or something, then I'll go out and shop for some other mushrooms that I can, that I can eat. But, but <clears throat> those two, especially shiitake, fabulous mushroom. Man, if you have access to, to shiitake, you need to put it into your diet. It's a great mushroom. You know, shiitake, the thing about shiitake that is interesting is that, you know, some people go, oh, it's kind of expensive. Hey, it's not expensive at all. You, if you even a quarter of a pound of shiitake, you look at that and you're, you've got like 25, 30 mushrooms there because these mushrooms, they're, they're not like agaricus. You know, with agaricus, it is a button. It's heavy. And, and it's the button mushroom, which is basically it's immature. They harvest it at an immature stage. And the reason they do is that it gives it a much better shelf life. One agaricus mushroom, one medium-sized agaricus, is actually 40 grams. 40 grams. Now, think about that. 40 grams. Now, now a pound is 450. Four, so that's like 10 agaricus, 10 medium-sized agaricus makes one pound of mushrooms. And the agaricus is the typical the white button. Mushroom. button. But, yeah. Button mushroom. That's right. That's right. That's that's the agaricus. And, and look— a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, Gary, because, you know, it's like this, it's bland, it's that. You know what? I I, I like agaricus, and, and I spent 10 years on agaricus farm growing them. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get tired of them. I still like agaricus. It's a great, very meaty mushroom, very, very tasty. Uh, I, I, I challenge anybody out there to a blind taste test <laughs> yeah nice <laughs> you, you, you tell me that it's not it's 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 bland and and so forth i challenge you and we'll do a, a mushroom tasting and and uh we'll see <laughs> you know, That's i fun. assure you you will find it to be a very tasty mushroom so anyway i i eat got garicus and shiitake mushroom i i have a three or four times a week for sure i'll i'll eat Mushrooms. So I, I'm at least eating uh, one or two pounds of mushrooms a week. What what is is there a and, and, and this is maybe an obvious answer, but is there a difference between <clears throat> cooking and eating mushrooms uh, as part of your normal diet versus supplementing um, in the pill form? Well, yes, there there is. I mean, one of the things about eating mushrooms is that mushrooms do have chitin in their cell walls, which makes them a little less digestible. Um, however, the, the mushrooms are very high in fiber. 
So they're feeding our microbiome and that's right. a, that's a really good benefit. I mean, that's one of the things that in, in the very beginning, like in the seventies, uh, they nutritionists used to think of mushrooms as being, there's a garnish. It's, it's a flavorful item, but it's got no nutritional value. It's like, what? No, wait a minute here. Well, the reason they said that because there is no calories in mushrooms and, uh, but mushrooms have good protein content, 20 to 40%. They've got a high carbohydrate, good carbohydrates, the beta glucans, uh, mannitol, They've got, uh, they're high in B vitamins, B, niacin, riboflavin, um, potassium, phosphorus. Mushrooms are a great food. They really are. In terms of a vegetable, they're, they're right at the top and as far as I'm concerned. So it's really great to put them in there. But when you're talking about supplements, what, what happens is that we can take the mushrooms, we can process them a little bit so that if, we, if you take a gram or two grams of this mushroom powder, you're going to be getting a lot more than just, let's say, the equivalent in terms of fresh mushrooms because we've pre-digested them. That's what we've done. We've pre-digested them. And, you know, it's like a lot of things. If you, if you have uh, something that's uh, 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 solid and you have to chew it up, well, you know, we don't chew things as long as we should, right? I mean, if we were doing it right, we'd sit there and ruminate like a cow to get everything out of it, <laughs> right? But, yeah, but, right. But we don't, right? But if, if I take that same food and I dry it, grind it to a powder, now we've got all of that surface area there, all of those beta-glucans, everything, that we're going to get all the nutrients out of this. We're going to get everything out of it. So, so we're getting it in a form that's going to be much more, let's just say bioavailable or much more, uh, for us to be able to utilize it. So that's where the supplement really comes in. And, and, you know, the supplement too is something. And, and look, I tell people, you know, eat mushrooms first, get them into your diet. But if you're, if you're like, um, having issues with your immunity, you're constantly, you know, falling to a cold and you get too many of them, and then you're having a hard time dragging yourself out of them, or you're tired or something like that, well, start to supplement. I mean, I mean, after you get mushrooms into your diet, start to supplement. They're not going to work overnight. That's really not how they work. They, they really take some time to work, but they, they need to be there in the background because they're immune modulators. They're something that, that mm. if you need, need them, they will modulate your immunity and they will start to produce, kick in and start to produce more immune cells. And you know, whether it's natural killer cells or macrophages, they'll start to stimulate the production of that. And that's really what you're looking for. And that's the basic benefit of all of these medicinal mushrooms is they're going to enhance your immunity. They're going to keep you at a little operating at a little higher level. And in that sense, you know, I mean, everybody looks at lion's mane as the nootropic because it's enhancing our, our cognitive functions and memory and things like that. But, but, you know, these other mushrooms and just the fact that they're enhancing immunity, they work on so many levels uh, they could really be considered nootropic as well. Yeah, gut nootropics or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That as well as just you know immunity in itself. If you're if you've you've kicked it up, you've got a higher level of immunity. Well, that is uh, you know anything that enhances our ability to operate is you know pretty much what I understand to be a definition for nootropic. And so so yeah. for me that's like yeah, and and you know to me they're just like one of those beautiful foods that is like food as medicine. This is not only a great food, but this is also something that works on, a, on another level. And, and most of our foods should operate that way, right? I mean, we right. want foods that are not just feeding us the basic nutrients, but feeding us these other phytochemicals that help us in other ways. Totally agree with that. And I, I can tell, I mean, I, I could tell the difference when, when, um, when the Michael line first came out, um, you know, I sort of pride myself on my productivity and, you know, as a biohacking entrepreneur, podcaster, meditator, dad, super dude. And I could tell, um, something that I, I could tell that I was missing, uh, something when I first started to take, uh, the Michael lines because I had a little bit more energy. I had a little bit more vitality. I woke up feeling a little bit more rested. I was, uh, I, I was, uh, I felt like my immunity had strengthened a little bit and yeah. I hadn't really been doing anything else. I wasn't introducing or, or experimenting with any other supplements or vitamins or nootropics at that point. 
Um, and, and I could tell, I could tell a noticeable, um, a noticeable boost in my energy and my cognition, um, when I started to take them and I haven't stopped. I mean, I've just like, and you said the point you made was that they take a little bit while, a little while to kind of, um, start to work, um, and integrate with your system. And I, and I could totally attest to that. Uh, do you, what is the most popular, popular is a loaded term, but what do you think is the most, whether it's, um, best selling or sexiest what what's what's the most popular mushroom to eat and what's the most popular mushroom uh, as a supplement well you know you know it's interesting because for um just going back a, a ways in history for the longest time um agaricus especially uh well agaricus production was like the the number one mushroom produced in the world. But in the last 10 years, shiitake has overtaken it. And I think that's a lot because the shiitake is starting to be grown in the West now and also because the, the Chinese, they have ramped up production of shiitake to uh, incredible amounts. And and so um, in that sense, um, you know, shiitake is just right up there. But in terms of like our business, for example, it, it's really interesting, you know, Sean, because some of the mushrooms that we're selling a ton of today um, back in the nineties were off the radar. Well, we weren't even selling lion's mane in the, in the nineties. Um, we, I, I, in fact, here, here's what's really interesting to me in 2000, in 2000, I, I, you know, like I've known about chaga for a, a long time. I've read about chaga. I know it's out there in 2000. I bought two tons of raw chaga <laughs> from Russia and had it transported to Canada and we made it into an extract. We made it into an eight to one extract. So, so, you know, like a ton of chaga, eight to one extract, that's, that's nothing more than 120 kilos of extract. So, but you know, you, two tons is a lot of, chaga. yeah. And, and here's the thing that I, I'm going to blow some people's minds with this. Here's the, here's what's interesting is I bought that chaga for $2 and 50 cents a kilogram. You could not buy raw chaga Whoa. wholesale at this point in time for probably less than twenty to twenty-five dollars wow. uh, a kilogram, and I bought it for two dollars and fifty cents a kilogram. And, and the reason was at that time Russia had been brought to its knees; uh, the, the economy was uh, shattered, and so people were scrambling to sell anything at any price. Huh? And so. Uh, I, I happened to happen onto somebody who had the Russian connections and he was trying to get, he was from the U.S. actually, he was trying to get business going in Russia in the U.S. And, and actually, okay, that's cool. I, I bought the two tons. I brought it in. We processed it into a high quality extract. I, I put it out there to everybody. Nobody was interested. <laughs> <laughs> this is 2000. Nobody was interested in this extract. I couldn't give it away hardly. And I thought, wow. I thought, man, I'm going to be out there with this amazing chaga extract. And, and I was, and it was a great extract, but there was no market for it. And, and so it took, I mean, so I ended up with like 250 kilos of chaga extract. It took me a while to sell that. Uh, I mean, I, I processed the first, first batch had 120 kilos, must've taken three or four years to get rid of it. I, wow. proce I processed more in 2006. It took another two or three or four years to get rid of it. It was like, you know, five kilos here, a couple kilos there. I mean, I, it was shocking. It was shocking. Today, Chaga is like, man, that's all you hear about. If you go out on the internet, you hear about Chaga and, 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 you know, back to your question, the, the mushroom right now that's really trending like crazy and everybody and his brother wants is lion's mane. Lion's mane is what everybody's excited about, partially because of the fact that everybody in the world thinks that their memory's going bad. <laughs> and, yeah. And so any, anything that can help memory, people are like, let me have it. I want it right now. How much do I have to take? How much do I have to pay? Here's my money. Sure. I need it. And uh, so in that sense, that's really trending. Chaga. Chaga is definitely trending as well. Um, the, uh, in fact, and let me say this about Chaga too, is like, if you go out on the internet and, and what you'll, what you'll hear out there and people, Chaga, the king of mushrooms, it's like, 
What are you, king of mushrooms? Who's who? Who comes up with this anyway? <laughs> king of mushrooms. And you look at like, here's what Chaga does. Holy smokes! How far does this list go? Is there anything it doesn't do? You know, it's like it's like a panacea. And the way they sell this stuff is like, you know, it's like the, some guy at a, a circus, you know, it's like, come one, come all, Chaga, see the wonderful Chaga. <laughs> you know, it's like, stop. <laughs> Let me t- Listen, Chaga has benefits. Chaga is a good medicinal mushroom, but it's not the king. It's not going to do all that that you think it's going to do. It's not a panacea. Uh, you know, chaga has been used traditionally for stomach issues. That's where traditionally chaga has been used. It was a folk remedy for cancer, but it's not going to cure anybody's cancer. So don't think it's going to cure your cancer. It's got some good properties. But interestingly enough, chaga is not a mushroom. Chaga is not really mycelium. Chaga is a canker. Chaga is a canker. Chaga is a, the manifestation of a disease. This, this tree has been, has been invaded by this fungus, and this fungus is growing inside this tree. And at some point, the tree goes, oh, my God, I, I got to get out, and, and pushes out this tissue out the side of the trunk. And this tissue's got this black layer, gnarly layer, but that what we call chaga is a canker and it's not. And, and if you actually were to do a, a cross section of it and put it under a microscope, there's only maybe 10% of mycelium in there. Huh? The rest is, is woody tissue. And that outer layer is, is, is melanin. Um, so, so it's, it's almost not even fungal, but it does have these benefits. But, but one of the things with chaga is once, once that, uh, tree gets attacked by this fungus and it's, a uh, uh, the fungus is, uh, uh, parasitic on this tree. The tree is uh, the walking dead. You know, you want, you want to see the walking dead? It's a, it's a birch tree with chaga on it. <laughs> that tree is basically a dead tree standing. And you can harvest those chaga off there. The tree, nothing's going to, you know, it's like, yeah, you're going to take a wart off that tree. Is the tree going to be harmed by it? No, not going to be harmed by it at all. In fact, a lot of those places, the chaga will grow right back. Um, and the tree has got a, its life has been definitely shortened. And at some point, it's just going to fall over because it's been, it's been basically consumed on the inside by this mycelium. I mean, I mean, there it is. It looks like a regular tree, but the but it's filled with this mycelium that's consumed with that. I've got trees on my property here in the Pacific Northwest that that you know, as you know, we have all sorts of shelf fungi that are growing on trees. Oh yeah, I've got trees where sometimes I'll just be kind of sitting in my living room and I hear this boom, and I'm like, what was that? And I look outside, and some tree just just halfway up, it just split and fell. Well, that tree had all of these different fungi growing on it. And I'm like, okay, there you go. That, that tree was a standing dead tree. It, it had been, it was rotted out. And that's what these fungi do. They basically are, they, they are a type of rot on the inside of that tree. And it'll get to a certain point and it will simply break off and fall to the ground and be further consumed by that fungus or mushroom, as we want to call it, and all sorts of other things. I mean, like <laughs> insects and bacteria, you name it. It's like, it's like all around us, it's the process of, of uh, basically um, decay and, and uh, organisms doing what they're supposed to be doing. Everybody's feeding off each other. We're feeding, they're feeding, we're all feeding. <laughs> you know, it's, it's one big feast, right? And at some point, we're going to be <laughs> food for some, yeah. right? It's the cycle of life. It's death and rebirth. It's the way it goes. That's absolutely right. So Chaga, so Chaga and Lion's Mane are the new it girls of the mushroom world. And they are. One they are. It's not even a mushroom. And the other one too is, is Cordyceps. Cordyceps is really, right. really um, trending a lot. And that one, as you know, is used more for endurance and energy and people who are into athletics and working out and stuff like that, they'll take cordyceps. And, and, uh, so, so those, so, and, and if you add ratio to that, there's the top four right there. There's the top four mushrooms right now that are really, you know, everybody wants and, and lots of new products for them and things like that. And, and yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, and, and 
you know, it's great. And I'm glad that they're coming into prominence, but I don't like to see things like what's happening with Chaga, where it's called the King of Mushrooms and it's a panacea and everything. And, and Sean, look, in the 70s, Shiitake was actually the King of Mushrooms. <laughs> in the 80s, it was Reishi. In the 90s, Maitake was being called the King of Mushrooms. And now we have a new king. You know, I, I, I don't know who the new king's going to be after that, but I'm sure there will be a new king at some point because I've seen four of them already. Are the Maitake the skinny little ones with the white caps? No, that's the Enoki Taki. Enoki Taki. Yeah, and, and oh man, I love I love those. They're they're a wonderful. Me too. Mushroom. They, oh man, oh. top of at the top of a nice bowl of soup. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they can use in so many ways. I like to just strip them out, fry them up, and they're like crunchy noodles. Ooh, yeah, yeah, I know they're delicious, good. just delicious. I can take one of those whole packages and just split them all up, fry them up, noodles, beautiful. Yeah, great texture. Do you uh, do you ever go out and forage? Oh yeah, has that ever been your thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I I enjoy getting out in the woods. You know, mushroom hunting is like a treasure hunt. I you know it's something that I've always I've I've been out. You know, I went to uh, yeah, I, I did it in college a number of times. Um, and, and it's been a while since I've done it, but it's so fun because the the more you know about your natural environment in, in the trees and the being able to recognize plants and understanding how they interact and um, the uses of them, it just – the world comes alive. The whole planet just like uh, – is it, it – you, you just feel more connected to it in the, the couple of times that we were out uh, – um, foraging we were looking for for uh we were looking for lots of different types of mushrooms including the uh the psychoactive types sure uh when we were foraging um but it's just it, you just feel you kind of understand the interconnectedness of things when you're out looking for mushrooms absolutely right yeah and and you know what we're in an ecosystem right and there's all sorts of different plants and animals and microorganisms and and, and you know a lot of people like to look at that as like it's a war, it's a fight for this or fight for. I, you know, I, I don't just I don't buy into that idea or or that viewpoint. I think we're all actually cooperating and we're all just just trying to move through this. We're trying to get along. Sometimes we might compete for something. Okay, yeah, that's how it is. There are times where we might be in a life and death struggle with something like if I'm out there and I get attacked by a cougar or something like that. Okay. Well, that's part of it too. But again, you know what, really, we're just, we're just all working together in this. And, and that's something that, that I, I wish people would, would really get into and grok this whole idea of cooperation. We're in this big Gaia here of all of these organisms and, and, it's so important to view it that way and to treat everything with respect. Absolutely. I mean, how can you be respectful if you're tossing your garbage out into the world or if you're polluting the world in, in some way? I mean, really, people should look at it as Mother Earth. I mean, this is Gaia. This is, this is what nourishes us. This is what we have to keep sacred and we have to keep this clean and vibrant and something that will continue to support us and sustain us and not just tear it apart for immediate gain, which is going on out there all the time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, and, and to that note, when you look at the different uses of mushrooms for cleaning up oil spills, for, um, nutrition, for medicine, you know, um, it's, it's such a fun, such a unique thing, this fungi, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've read a number of places like, you know, some people, there's the directed transpermia uh, idea or like like maybe the mushrooms came from another planet because uh, they're so unique, right? You ever you ever give any 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 time to that notion? That maybe... uh, you know what? <laughs> well, look, the, the fact of the matter is, is there's cosmic dust that's going all throughout the universe and, and yeah. who who knows? But but look, you know, you could not dream up a more unbelievable place than this planet if you look at some of the animals out there or plants i mean you a science fiction writer could not create anything as bizarre 
yeah. as what we've got out there right now. So, so no, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't really um, think about outer space kind of things like that. I, I think we've got what we've got right here is just so amazing and beautiful and bizarre that that I could just be, you know, looking at that and grokking it all day long and still never lose my sense of awe and amazement. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. And the more we can get outside, the more we can take our shoes off and walk around in the dirt and the grass. I think that that's a major thing that, that, that we just don't get outside enough. We just don't get out, get dirty, get the fresh air, connect with nature in a way where we have reverence and respect. You know, it's easy to it's easy to marginalize resources and, and not think about it when you're inside all day staring at screens and watching Game of Thrones. But when you when you can connect with nature in a very real way in a personal way you 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 come to understand the the diversity and the uses and the the interplay the drama of of what it is to live on this planet yes absolutely and that's that's where you as a parent you need to uh, take your kids out get them get them in i mean you know what we are so lucky sean to be living in the pacific northwest We've got access to to beautiful lakes and rivers and forests and mountains and waters. I mean, we we are so lucky. I mean, to me, the fact that I was born in this ecosystem, I just feel so fortunate because not only that, it's peaceful. And uh, I, I live here in Tofino. I live in an old growth forest. I have trees out here that would take four or five people holding hands to be able to reach around this thing. I mean, these are massive, massive trees here. I mean, this old growth forest is just absolutely amazing. And and being able to be a part of that and live in it, I mean, it's just I, I just feel so so lucky. And and that's where having your children and introducing them to, to that is so very important and having them learn the respect for plants and animals and for everything as being interconnected. That's what you have to do. That's, that's how we can ultimately change things. And that's what we, we have to do because, you know, let's face it, the, the whole world is, is under threat right now. And, and, uh, you know, that's, that's just really an unfortunate situation. Yeah, when we when we understand that 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 the food that we eat, you know, that food is medicine, and and we can choose to participate in it, we can choose to to learn, and what's clear to me is is your your level of ethics around around the mushrooms and protecting uh, the truth around how people consume them, and it, I think it's noble. I think it's um, I think it's impressive because. You know, um, obviously it's, it's a major part of your life's work. Um, and from where I'm sitting, someone who's, you know, I don't drink tap water cause I don't like the fluoride and the chlorine and the iron content. You know, I, you know, I forage for nettles when it's season, in season. I, I need to go, I need to find a mushroom expert and head back out, head out there more often, but you know, like I, I try to, I try to have a reverence for the, for this, for this world that I live in. And I, and I, I do, I try to pass that on to my kids as much as I can. But, um, another question I have for you is, um, yeah, you know, what, what's the future of mushrooms look like? There's going to be a new King, you know, in a couple of years, there's there <laughs> long, the King is dead. It's no longer lion's mane, long live the King, uh, uh, Cubenzies. Uh, but, um, you know, what what does the future of mushrooms look like? Well, you know what? I, I think, for one, we're going to see a lot more uh, different species in the marketplace uh, as food. That's that's just absolutely going to happen. We're going to have a lot more choices there for food. I mean, people are going to also get out and, and hunt wild mushrooms more. We're going to find out about other species that have certain benefits. So the whole medicinal mushroom world will be will be changing a little bit as we go along and and we'll find out new things about the mushrooms that we have now as we gain more instruments in terms of analyzing them and and look at, looking at them in certain ways to see how uh how they're being uh, you know what science tells us about that the experiments that are going to be done and things like that and and also we're going to get a lot more feedback from people that are using 
mushrooms as supplements and as food. And that feedback is going to be really important as we go forward. You know, it's just like you look at certain herbs out there that have been used a long time, whether it's echinacea or ginseng or things like that. Well, that's because there's been enough people using them and the feedback loop has come through and said, hey, these really have value. These really help. And so that's the other side of it is as more people use mushrooms for food and, and medicine, that will be the other thing that will sort of change and give us more information about it. The other thing that's really positive, we didn't touch on it much, but it's just the whole the whole thing of now that psilocybe mushrooms are are starting to be talked about more and and starting they're starting to be utilized whether in uh, psychiatric medicine or even being used um, uh, in a, a way for personal growth uh, by people doing it in in ways that are are very positive and uh, this is something that really I think is is maybe the other, trend here and, and you know here, here's the wonderful thing about psilocybe mushrooms is that you know there was a time certainly back in the 60s where you know we really didn't have actual mushrooms to be able to eat we did we had some wild ones that we could find but it but we had a lot of little uh, pills uh, and, and really oh yeah yeah we had we had like yeah whether it be uh, lsd or mescaline or, or some of them that were called psilocybin most of all the pills that were there were were acid and, and but you never knew how what was right. the, the dose of it or anything like that you know today it's people are really fortunate because when you can actually look down and you can see hey look at that i've actually got a mushroom here there's a stem there's the cap there you can weigh it you can measure it you can make those kind of decisions on how much you want to take whereas you know you're taking a little pill and you don't know how strong that's going to be all you've got is the testimony from somebody that you bought it from or right. some friend that already took it who said oh yeah this is really good or, or or strong or not so strong or whatever now now we've actually got the mushroom itself sitting there and that was something that we had in the 70s where we started to discover all these different species that were growing the pacific northwest for example and then then um, growing them in the 70s as well so that we could grow them and we could uh, actually be able to you know do more of this okay how many do you want to take and be able to know what you're doing and know exactly what you're taking you know it's like it's like that is something that it, you think about it like oh yeah yeah, well, if it's illegal, or if it's in a in a pill that is not come in a in a you know a prescription that tells you exactly how much is in there, well, you you just don't know. So so right now it's a t it's a great time in that sense is that you've got the ability to to know those kinds of things and and I think that's going to open up a whole new world going forward as long as as long as it's left alone and is not you know, channeled in the wrong places and still, you know, criminalized in some way. I mean, because, you know, I mean, I mean, just think about that, how they criminalize so many people for just uh, smoking a joint, for example. And and, uh, and finally, I mean, they just legalized uh, cannabis in Canada last month. Right. The whole country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, the funny thing is, is that I don't really toke up anymore, uh, so I can look back and say, yeah, every time I smoked, I, I was uh, doing it illegally. <laughs> yeah, right. Now now it's 10 times as strong, and uh, you can get it down the street. Well, yeah, and, and, and uh, just to be clear, too, the, believe me, we had a lot of really good smoke back in the day, and, and I, I spent a lot of time in Mexico, too, and, and we had some stuff that was just amazing, really amazing, and... Uh, yeah, I know. I know a lot of the indica and stuff is is pretty strong. But one of the things I realized during my smoking days was that you don't have to smoke a lot. I mean, roll a joint and take one hit of the good stuff. That's all you yeah. really need, or maybe two most. You know, right. uh, you know, somebody who's going like, oh yeah, it's just too too strong. It's like, well, don't smoke the whole joint. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, don't don't lose it, dude. <laughs> you know, it's like if it's so strong, just take one hit. It's pretty yeah. simple. You know? Yeah. On that on that note, I, I you know I I'm I'm also in, encouraged by the work that's being done um, in the clinical trials for um, you know assisted psychotherapy and the uses of psilocybin and uh, you know the 
I think it's a double-edged sword, this this trend of microdosing, right? Yes. Um, we had uh, Paul Austin, who's um, sort of a, a microdosing expert, and he's working um, with the right organizations. I think his approach to it is with reverence and appreciation and respect. Um, and, you know, I myself have experimented for weeks and weeks and weeks at a time doing 0.2 to 0.3 grams um, first thing in the morning, four days on, three days off, um, to see what sort of benefits came from it. Yep. And, and it's, it's powerful and it doesn't need to give you, you don't, you know, you don't need to like be f- on the floor staring up at the fan at the ceiling, yep. um, to, to, to get the benefits. But, but the, the future of medicine, the future of psychotherapy, uh, for helping people with traumatic, um, uh, with with post traumatic stress disorder or with traumatic injury, you know, um, I'm really encouraged, and I'm also a little bit worried that it's going to be so clinicalized that a little bit of that magic that comes from uh, from the mushroom, which I, I believe has a certain energetic signature has a consciousness has a presence to it that hopefully in the advancement of it in in the clinical setting uh we don't lose sight of a little bit of the magic uh uh, that comes along with with um with consuming um a a psychedelic uh, mushroom and i've i know a handful of people who who have who have also been doing microdosing protocols for weeks and weeks and months and have anecdotally shared with me that they are way less anxious and they are their outlook has changed dramatically and it wasn't as though they had the Terrence McKenna five dry grams in silent darkness pitch black to just like totally transcend space and time yep. it was like not even noticeable right. and yet over these over the course of these couple of weeks, they had a change in, in, in their cognition. And I, and I, you know, I, I wonder if, I wonder what your thoughts on are on all that. Well, you know what? I think th- this gets back to kind of what we were talking about before, which is, is, uh, as this progresses, we're going to get a lot of feedback from people and, and that feedback is going to come and, and people will write books and there'll be stories and all of this. And, and those will prove out one way or the other and give people some sort of guidelines for it. I mean, because, you know, look, we, we can't say, okay, take uh, 0.3 of a gram or 0.5 of a gram. You, you got to look at, okay, for what, a 50 kilo woman or a 80 kilo man or, you know, that's where you have to be adjusting those types of levels to the, to the person. But I think, I think, I, I think it's positive in many ways. And, and one thing that we really have to be aware of is that they're going to try and keep it in this clinical setting. Right. And, and, and it really, okay, it's fine to be there, but don't try and take it away from people that want to use it in a, a setting that's more traditional. Right. Uh, and, and in that sense, what I would really like to see happen is I'd like to see centers um, as one way of doing this. Centers set up all over the country for people that have nowhere else to go, that they can go to a center. There'll be guides there. They can take you through the process. You know, a lot of us have our own centers where we have groups of friends. Yeah, if we, right. If we want to take, if we want to take that, and this is how it was um, in the beginning, back in the '60s, is we had groups of friends. We'd we'd at, at certain, you know, in the evening and you know, some weekend or something, we'd sit around and we would take this together yeah. amongst friends in a setting that was reasonably safe. I mean, you know, and, and, and that's, what's important. It's like, you need to do it in a setting where there's somebody that's handling the door, the phone, the, you name it, you yeah. know, the fire, all of that. I mean, you can look at the native American church as a model, as an example of how it's done. So the people can come in, they can be freed of all of that external whatever that, so they don't have to worry about anything distracting them and what they're doing. They can just enjoy the whole experience in a safe setting. And so, so having centers like that would be fantastic. And also, 
you know, I think people are becoming, there's enough books and things out there that people can, are learning about how to, how to enjoy these things properly. And, and, and I'm not saying, you know, don't go, don't get me wrong. I, I think there is also a place for somebody to, to just, you know, uh, a music concert or something, not five grams, but maybe one gram, you know, it's just like, just like when I used to go to a concert, I, I would have a joint in my pocket and, and uh, as soon as that band was starting to take the stage, I'd fire it up and take a couple of quick tokes. And yeah. I, I, that first tune, I'd go right up with that first tune. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, rather than doing it a half hour before, and then by the time the band comes on, I'm starting to come down and all this. No, no. So there, there are ways of doing it. And, and I, I'm just hoping that it can be done without having these people, those people, trying to put their constraints on it let's let's let it happen in a safe way but the way you do that is not by making something illegal or all these rules and regulations that's the worst thing you can do now we're starting to come out of that prohibition for pot for one and and we need to end the prohibition for these other things as well because all that does is is create problems you know, it needs to be out. It needs to be in the open. It needs to be right there where we can manage it and and educate people about it. That's that's what people need. They need to. I mean, in the '60s, we had no real mentors or elders that could talk to us about how you do these things. We're flying blind. Right. Absolutely. So we were learning as we went, and, and now we're at a point where no, we've got a lot of knowledge now and there's a lot of people that we can look to for guidance and and we've got a lot more uh, um, information so I, i'm really hopeful right now and i just hope the people that run the show will just keep their mitts <laughs> out, of, <laughs> out of it because we don't need them to come in and ruin the party yeah no kidding <laughs> here here <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I, I know, I know. Maps has has shares that vision. You know, the multidisciplinary yep. association for the psychedelic studies. Yep. They they share that vision of of retreat centers where you can go and experience an entheogen or a psychedelic in a in a place that's controlled and staffed with people who are trained. You know, yeah. like yeah. the Zendo project. Yeah. And and I I think that, you know, the um, there. Not, there are also it, it, it is so many different psychedelic mushrooms that one could take to have different experiences, and and so the place and the future of mushrooms um, in that arena, I think there's there's a ton of potential in there too. You know, as I, as I sit here and, and think about you know the next you know ten or twenty or thirty years of of, of mushrooms and, and where they go and and fungi in general. You know, it's probably it's probably encouraging to know that that it's still just catching on, and it's probably frustrating as hell to know that it's just catching on, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're so close to it that that it's that maybe you've got great perspective, and I know that you're you know you're well traveled and you're you're up on the trends and, and know what's going on, um, but I you know I, it's it's probably a double edged sword because there's a lot to look forward to and also people need to get in the game. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's right. I, I, and, and, you know, I, I think it can just be real positive for everybody to know that there is this, this whole other world. There's this, uh, you know, it, it, and, and if you read the experiences that, that people have, if they're in the right setting, it's, it's all so very positive. It's life changing. Yeah. And that's what we need. We need people to have those life changing experiences. And, and, and l let me just say this to Sean is like, what do you think the real mushroom of immortality is, Sean? <laughs> well, to me, it, there's no question that it's like the psilocybe mushroom. There's a mushroom yeah. of immortality. Because, you know, if you get into that space where there is no time, it's that timeless space, and you dissolve away, you're immortal. Absolutely. Uh, I've been there. I've been there. Uh, <laughs> and... Well, Can't wait to go back. Well, and and listen, could that not be the the most beneficial healing experience that we could we could have? I mean, when you look back at the way these were used shamanically, 
that and the way they talk about the experience, because a lot of the a lot of the religions were the major religions were based around this, the experience itself, that experience I believe is probably the primary healing experience that anybody can have where every cell in your body is a light. It is just that energy of the universe. You dissolve right into it. That, that is as healing as that's more healing than anything we've got out there. That that's the, the ultimate healing experience in my opinion. I totally agree. I, I totally agree. I think that there's that 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 moment that moment of transcendence where you where you kind of quit fighting it a little bit and you yep. sort of let it go. Yep. It prepares you for death. Yep. Uh, it 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 uh, it does a number on your ego. Yep. Um, it keeps your ego in check. It allows you to connect with the other people around you who are also who are either you know have you who have either ingested it or not. Yep. You know, this sense of interconnectedness, yep. this this sense of um, sentience, like this this intelligence that that's there kind of all the time um, th- th- that exists within, you know, the, the, the psilocybin. And, you know, in my experience, you know, I, I've, you know, I have no experience with Amanita muscaria um, and maybe some of the other more obscure ones, but, you know... Um, a strain, Z strain, penis envy, you know, those, those have a different intelligence. They're, they're, they're different sentient things. Um, and they have a lot to teach us. And the, the process of coming of age, these, you know, these sorts of, um, transcendent experiences we are starved for in, in our current Western paradigm we don't have, we don't value transcendent experience anymore. They're walkabouts, you know, sweat lodges and peyote ceremonies or mushroom ceremonies. Uh, we, we, we are looking for it and we're looking for it in the wrong places. We're looking for it in, you know, NFL football games. It's not there. We're looking, we're looking for it in, a um, new car. <laughs> in a new car. Right. Um, uh, and, and I, I think it's something that that I'm so glad that our conversation was able to go here, Jeff, because this this type of attention, this type of conversation, is one that that uh, it takes a little bit of courage to have, and mm-hmm. there's not that many outlets where you can actually speak freely on this sort of thing. Um, and you know, well, clearly, we're just we're just we're on the same page here, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let me let me ask you something, Sean. Are, are you familiar with Aldous Huxley? Oh yeah, have you read his book Island? I've not read Island. I've read Doors of Perception, but not Island. You know what? Read Island. I mean, I highly recommend it. It it is his his vision of what the world could be like. It's really interesting. I mean, it it, it was the Bible for a lot of us. You know, it was like, wow, this is what it could be. And and so you know, he he did his whole. Um, um, <clears throat> um uh, well, Brave New World, okay, and that was the dystopian world that he could envision, just like 1984. But Island Island was the other side of that. Yeah, well, and he did uh, he had, he did uh, a dose of acid on his uh, on his deathbed. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. No, he was he was an amazing guy, he really was, and and uh, was somebody who again helped out a lot of people and brought, brought the whole issue of this, uh, to the forefront for yeah. people. Yeah. He was, he was quite a, a giant of a man. Yeah. Vision. Absolutely. Vision. Yeah. Yep. Well, we could, we could keep going, but I think that's a good place. <laughs> that's yeah, right. Could... That's a good place to end it for sure. Yeah. We, we could keep going. No question about it. Yeah. <laughs> and certainly um, next time I'm in Seattle, I'll, I'll, uh, stop in and say hello and we can yeah together. yeah you can finally go in and take a float uh <laughs> at my old float center yeah i know it's so interesting because you know i i uh after i got the free floats from you and and after uh, roy turned me on to you and what you're doing and all that and i tried a couple of times when i was in seattle and you know never quite worked out right being able to yeah. get together and do all the rest and i never you know here was i was i was with a friend who lives in green lake and i never did get over for a float and i'm like i know god 
<laughs> and, and uh, you know, see, like I say, Seattle is my where I grew up, so I know Seattle very intimately. And and my mother just lives in North Seattle, and I have good friends in Seattle, so I get down there occasionally. But uh, uh, and when I do, I'll definitely look you up, and maybe you and I and Roy can go out for uh, a meal or something like that. But we can definitely get together. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, if you if you don't mind, I'd love for you. Uh, it's it's a question uh, in the form of a of a sentence. I would love for you to finish, uh, based on everything that you know. Um, uh, if you would please finish the sentence, everyone should know that that mushrooms can provide you with an experience that could very well change your life for the better. Jeff, thanks for joining us on the Optimal Performance Podcast. My pleasure. Absolutely, Sean. My pleasure.